So a big field, as I say, Charlie Hicks, the man to keep an eye on. What will be interesting is to see what the tactics of perhaps the British trio and then a few of the others in this field like Guerrero. What they're going to do. Rabi as well. I haven't seen anything of Rabi. Just trying to make sure he's out there. Didn't see him in the call room in the little behind the scenes glimpses we saw earlier. But the very good Norwegian will certainly be somebody who you'll have to factor into the medal reckoning. There's Miguelon of Spain. There we finally see Rabi. Good to know you're still there, Mr. Rabi. Frey of Austria. Last year ran 13.39. Hasn't been quite close to that form this year. Macho Morgan of Spain and Ireland. Guerra. Now Guerra is third on the list of entrants behind Rabi and Hicks. So McLucky. Also saw Amaral of Portugal, sub 14 man. Musa of Finland. And a big round of applause for Mustafa Musa. So we pan across Hovadjad Carmen. The camera stops with Emil Herlander. Herlander went over the border and ran 13.45 in Stockholm, his personal best recently. Oh, we skipped over Barnica. Ruben Amaral in there, but he's not related to the other Amaral. Lock Scoparini, Kay McAvoy of Ireland, and Ayala of Israel before we had a quick glimpse of Charlie Hicks, and then on the inside, Lilesso of Denmark, Wagner of Germany, and Demisa of Israel. And they're away, 12 and a half laps of the track. Sort of expecting a slowish first kilometer, which is pretty traditional in championship racing. But I wouldn't be surprised if Hicks, knowing full well that he's by far and away the fastest man in the field, he just cranks it up. And indeed, Hicks has gone straight to the front, followed by Helander, Scomper in. And Hicks, well, he could stay out in front. Could almost run this as a time trial, you feel. But Helander's not letting him go on his own. McClucky up there as well at the moment. And Rabi. Rabi keeping tabs on him. But this pace of hits, I think, is probably going to string out the field very quickly. And there it is. One lap, 400 metres, and almost everybody is in single file. So Hicks, well, that looked like very close to a 60-second first 400 metres. That's pretty quick for this sort of racing. Yeah, Hicks impressively looking to command this race early on in a similar way to which his uh, teammate Megan Keith did. Emil Holanda, obviously a home favourite, someone who's improved by 10 seconds this year. Want to be someone to go with the early pace. Such a tricky challenge sometimes, you know, especially for athletes who aren't too experienced at championship racing. Might want to make it a good race, might want to play to your strengths, don't want to get caught up too much in the occasion. Don't want to let it drift you by either. Feeling like you still have more to give when it comes when it comes to the end of the race. But believe me, there aren't too many athletes who build out after a 5,000. 
I think it was really good conditions. Actually, the sun has come out the last few moments. So I think rising to closer to the temperatures that we saw yesterday here in Espo, just outside Helsinki. 21 degrees, 66% humidity. Sun beaming down onto the track now. Yes, Mila is trying to uh, just bridge this gap. Ahead of him, this front four, Fry, Rabi with Holanda and Hicks. Well, of course, Hicks has been a terrific performer on the cross-country, winning the last two European cross-country titles in the under-23 lines. So this is Tavanini, nicely over 181 for the Italian. Good form for her. Now well, Pulkinen and Miasso have already gone over. So too Olsen. This is Pesova, the Czech jumper. Nice swim. Nicely done as well. She's pleased with that. She's got long levers, Pesova. Yes, I think. That's an impressive effort from her as well. So you can see that uh, Joel Ebler Lilischel has managed to bridge that gap. So we now have this leading group of six. Apart from that, though, as you were, Hicks and Holanda at the front with uh, Rabi and Fry, but. The fact that Lidishaw has managed to work his way up to the back of Fry has, I think, given a bit of an incentive to those a little further back, especially if the pace doesn't increase over the next lap or two. We might indeed see more athletes just try and rejoin again. Well, that was a 2.39 opening kilometre from Hicks. So that's a very, very strong performance at this stage. Uh, just coming up to see the bell with eight laps to go. Hicks is really producing a very dominant performance here. I think he's decided just to really start at a very, very fast pace and just see what anybody else has got. And I don't think there's many people who can stay with this for much longer, to be honest. I mean, Rabi perhaps. Elander is operating but, uh, well, probably about 10 seconds inside his personal best pace, then he's a good runner himself. Then, as you say, Lilesso hanging on the back. The Dane. The Dane. We often thought that he's a good runner. He's a 13.29 runner. Oh, dear, what's is happened there? Is that Rabi? No, there I was think, a... Is something that happened. Oh, it is Rabi, it with is. With Rabi and Lilesho. Yeah. Well, we'll have a look at that, I'm sure, a bit later. So it's now hit, and Helander out in front, and a gap of about five minutes back to Lilesso. Here we go. No, I don't no. think. I don't. To be fair, I don't think Lilesso had anything to do no. with that. Rabi just, I think, decided something's wrong. Whether or not there was a pull or a cramp, uh, what a shame, because Rabi, we were looking at uh, possibly being in medal contention. But up the front, this is a head-to-head -head duel between Charlie Hicks and Emil Helander. And, of course, the Finn getting rousing support, not just down the home straight, but in the back straight. The stands there are quite full as well. So, blessing Anota in the high jump. Flawless so far. And it stays that way. Four jumps, four clearances for the German blessing Anota. Sort of languid style above the bar, but it's effective. She gets good height, good clearances, and then lets everything else do the work. So she adds her name. So in that group, there is five women clear. Well, the Lesso now starting to go back into the pack, but it's Hicks at the front. Hicks, 5.21.73 at two kilometres, and it's six laps to go. Ah, well, this race is already quite an interesting story. 
Uh, Will Barnicott, it looks like, or is that McClucky, the second of the two Brits? I think it is McClucky, yes. Uh, was in seventh place. Fry, who was uh, with the leaders, now well, well back into the pack. Really difficult to go with that early pace. Leela Shaw, we thought he'd done brilliantly to bridge that gap. I guess he is still in contention for a medal, which is certainly what he hoped to be when he rejoined the front group, even if the top two have now broken away. Rabi ending up dropping out of the race. And Leela Shaw in something like sixth place at the moment, I make it. And Fry well out of the lead group. Well, Quite a few changes. Hicks has just decided just to throw down the gauntlet and see if anybody can pick it up. And at the moment, only Emil Helander can. So this is a really strong run from Hicks. McClucky. The Frenchman. Scomparin. And just behind him, Will Barnicott at the moment. Lesso after that surge to stay with them. Looking as though he's drifting back in the pack. 3,000 metres, 8.06.47. So they're inside 13.30 pace. Lillishaw out of the race completely as well now. He's also dropped down onto the track. Well, Hicks has twice run inside 13.30. Belanda is operating about 15 seconds faster than he's ever run before. But as we've seen, the Finns are really rising to the occasion at these championships. So this is certainly a really gutsy run as well from Charlie Hicks. McLucky and Barnica, well, the two Britons leading the chasing pack in what... Well, if things stay this way, the battle for the bronze medal with four laps to go. But there's about, well, it's an even bigger gap. It's saying 60 metres on the screen, but I'm making it more like 70. Because with every stride, Charlie Hicks is pulling away from the chasing pack. Um, Emil Helander, though, very, very impressively just hanging on. Just really gritting his teeth. Helander, a class athlete, without a doubt. But never expecting him to be running at this sort of pace. Helander, well, to his credit, he's got good credentials. In those two European cross-country races, which Hitch won in 2021-2022, Helander finished 27th and 24th. But he's formerly a steeplechaser. He's a converted steeplechaser. Just missed out on the medals at the European Under-20 Championships two years ago when he was four. But he's really seeming to have improved vastly this year. Now 70 metres officially. McClucky leading that five-men group. That group including the third Briton, Will Barnica, Adam Mayo of Spain, Scomparin and Ayala. Guerra, who he expected to be up there, a long way back at the moment. So the Italian not in contention for the medals at the moment. Well, just coming up, We've just gone through 1,000 metres in 10.53.36. And amazingly... Hicks continuing to put distance between himself and the chasers. That uh, chasing group has to be a little bit careful because there's a second group of chasers who are closing in on them gradually. Well, it's still Hicks as he's done almost from the bell. Within the first 50 metres, he got to the front. Emil Hellander, as he's been throughout the previous part of the race, the best part of the race, just doggedly hanging on to Charlie Hicks hasn't been able to help with the pace at all not perhaps interested in the pace just tiring very slightly I'm just starting to see with 500 metres to go Hicks now starting to put just the merest 
additional bit of daylight between himself and Helander. Helander just starting to tie him out. And Hicks now, well, there's attritional pace. He's been clocking off 63, 64, 65s, and nobody else has been able to stay with him. So we're up for the bell, and Charlie Hicks has a two-meter lead over Emil Helander. And the Briton, well, last night we saw Megan Keith win over 12 and a half laps of the track for Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Will it be a British double over 5,000 metres? It's looking that way at the moment. Behind them, it's a real battle for the bronze, and Ayala's got in front. But at the moment, it's now 10, 12 metres back to Helanda. Charlie Hicks has just got 200 metres to go. One last trip around the bend, the home straight, and he could be home. But Ayala starting to break away from Barnica. It looks as though McClucky now isn't going to be a factor in that battle for bronze. Scompion is trying to stick up there. But as we come into the home straight, 100 metres to go. Charlie Hicks of Great Britain, Northern Ireland. He can afford to relax. Look around him. It's a terrific run from Hicks. A gun to take victory for the Briton. Charlie Hicks takes the 5,000 metres gold. Behind him, huge roar of delight from Emil Helander, who's set a personal best, broken his personal best of about five seconds and it looks like Will Barnica comes through for third, just winning that battle with Ayala of Israel What a terrific race, the way it unfolded well, Hicks has just appeared such an accomplished performer coming to this championships and the way he controlled it throughout Helander so, so brave going with him especially we saw the pace at the front of the women's race and the consequences that came as a result. Megan Keith said yesterday that the pace was just on the edge of what she felt she was comfortable with, but really tried to run it out of the others. And you can pretty much say similar of Hicks and Hillande behind him. It was an incredible psychological battle and physically in that uh, bronze fight. There was a, a group of five and Lilisho and Rabi had both dropped out. And at one point, probably some of those in the race think, Oh gosh, look how many are ahead of us. I wonder if a medal is still on the cards. It was. Will Barnicut was never really leading that group, but at the end he came through on a yellow who pushed the pace with one lap to go. And uh, of course, Barnicut will have to say thank you to his teammate McClucky, who ended up being the third of the Britons. But McClucky did a lot of hard work at the front of that group to help keep them in medal contention.